evening everyone, I'm Shadows Pub and welcome to Tip Your Tools Thursday Evening Edition taking place at the Steam at Gramble and streamed live on DLive on Rambling Radio. For those who are new to the show, you'll see a message I'm going to drop on the channel with instructions for an emoji you use to enter the queue. When I see the emoji, I will add you to the queue list and put another emoji by yours. If you want to see where you are in the queue, visit the DLive link. Be sure to mute the sound there if you are listening here. When your turn is called, you will drop your link in the text chat and come on to voice to tell us about your post. If you're unable to use voice, then you must have text ready to copy paste into the text channel when you drop the link. I think I'd have that memorized by now. How's everybody this evening? Hey, good. And there's Cobra Kang and Ret Typo. Would that be the correct pronunciation? I typically use uh, Ret Hippo, but it doesn't matter too much. You'll answer to just about anything that's close. I think this is your first time here, so welcome. Well, oh, thank you. I think one of your posts was presented at um, Drop in the Ocean the other day. Yep, that's correct. Ah, sometimes I have a memory. <laughs> so, Jan would like to go first tonight. So we'll let Jan go first tonight. Okay, if my mic is breaking up, somebody shout out. Is your oh, so far so good? I can hear you. Uh, well, sometimes from I don't often hear, so I don't know if mine is breaking up or not. For the first time, I'm not pimping one of my posts. I'm pimping someone else's post. Um, this is a coincidence, and um, it's just some of the things he says in here about when you're talking to children, I totally agree with. It's stuff I've said before myself, and I just think it should be more highlighted where more people are aware of it, and how you talk to children, you can't use the same words when you're talking to an adult. an example of what you mean by that? Well, it's kind of like sometimes when you're talking to a child, you're explaining why you can't do something. You also have to tell them that they're not in trouble, that you're trying to explain something to them and stuff like that. Because just because you're telling them they can't do something, sometimes that's, oh, I'm in trouble, where it's not. In a lot of cases, it can be a safety issue. True. So it's basically kids perceive things a little different to the way we perceive things. And as we grow older, I'm guilty of it myself. We forget these things and half of the conversations we have with children are reactionary rewards that we use every day in life. When you're talking to somebody young, you kind of have to adjust your conversation. They're not as aware of the world as we are. Yeah, my mother used to use a phrase that you can't put old, um, an old head on young shoulders. And we sometimes forget that. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, it's kind of like you have to guide them a little bit. And I think he says that in there in the post and... Probably not the same words I use, and he probably expresses it better. So I thought, yeah, well, it it deserves a bit of um, promotion. It's a goodwill thing, you know. And Kortoy says, hello, everyone. I'm back at work today. My new Bluetooth, Bluetooth headphones have died, waiting for a replacement to be shipped. So I'm just going to say hello. I need to go to a meeting. Have a good meeting. Seems to be something about Bluetooth headphones that a lot of people have problems with. I'll never buy another pair again. 
I, I, it, it interferes with my Wi-Fi when I try to hook it up to the computer. I thought yeah, I, I thought it'd be great to have you know I had a wireless headset and I was like yeah this is awesome, but now I can't hear anybody in PYPT this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wireless headset, but the wireless headset has a um, a nano connector, USB connector. I've been quite happy with it. I'm glad you like yours. Last two I tried, I. I brought them both back. I mean, they both suck. One was like a hundred bucks too. Well, this isn't Bluetooth. This is the wireless, wireless the USB, USB connector. Yeah, I probably have to look at something like that. Uh, what I went with lo is Logitech. Of course, I've used Logitech stuff for years and loved it. That's the ones I have to replace as my Logitech ones. They're nine years old, and I, I've, n I've never had a problem with them. And they're wireless, mm -hmm. but they're it, they're starting to have problems. But I, I mean, I used to be probably use them ten hours a day, so I can't ask for more than that. Yeah, I can understand that. But they're the yeah, you just plug it into a USB, and and then it has the little wireless do hickey that blinks right yeah and they're they're great <laughs> Damien says I'd ask for 11 hours at least one of the things well, that I, I do like is that um, I can plug the charger in to the headsets when I'm sitting here so like I, I would never get through all of PYPT on one charge so I can plug the charger in and, and still be using them yeah, I can too with mine. It, it there is a cord that um, connects to the Wi-Fi signal that you can plug it in and still use them. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I have um, been on there so long that I ran out of charge and and then had to plug it in. Oh, cough! You've never heard. Snook talking about stuff before apparently. Do hickeys and thingamajiggers blinky, and what you Yeah, those are <laughs> doing yeah. bobs. A blinky do hickey. Yeah, no, that's for that's the kids' way of talking. Well, no, the do hickey, that's yours. The do hickey is good, but the blinky, that's yeah. a real word. That's a real yours. word. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, the kitty girl makes blinkies. Yes, she does. The thing in my bob or blinky do hickey. <laughs> yeah, there we go. The do hickey goes into the thing of bob to make the west go round. Technical term, yep. Yeah. Yep, very definitely. You guys really did miss me this morning, didn't you? <laughs> Hey, I can't paste my link in. Okay. So this is another uh, writing tips post, and um, sorry, engine. Just so you know, you're feeding back. I think. Um, sorry, hold on. Let me just sort that out. There we go. Um, can, can we so hear? yeah, this is another another writing post, um, and it's really about um, setting goals in order in order to make it easier to uh, look at a blank page and and get some writing done. So in it, I suggest a certain amount of word counts, thus the title of the the post um, that you can try and aim at every day. And, yeah, try and hit that rather than saying, look, here's a blank page. I'm going to try and fill it. Just say, I'm going to do uh, 200 words, 300 words, 400 words or 500 words. And, and, and I'll get to that. And in the post, I, I kind of break down what those word counts represent. So, for example, 
um, if you wrote 200 words a day for a year, you'd hit the kind of word count of the first Harry Potter book, for example. And so if you look at that and you look at the amount of time you're spending um, chatting on Discord, really it's to hit 200 words, it's probably 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what it's about. Can you hear me right now? Anybody? I can hear you. I must, button must be stuck or something. Because it's not going off. I'm on push to talk, I swear to God. Let me, I'm going to change button. There's a, just a little bit of a hum going on on yours. And your button is, op- is open at the moment. Stuck on. There you go. Now it's off. There we go. There we go. Now we got quiet. Well, we can't be taking any time away from writing on Discord, so we're just going to have to increase the the word count. And if you if you actually look at your the amount you write. I mean, it really is as simple as this. If every message you write on Discord is as long as Snook's last one, it's about 20 words. That's 10 messages. So sacrificing 10 messages worth of time um, to end up with a 75,000 word draft in a year is probably quite good. Well, Snook, you do realize now that you could write Harry Potter in six months. I 20, could. 20 words is a short message. <laughs> I was just going to say, and, and, and I didn't fix my spelling ears in this one. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why J, that's why JK Rowling has editors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll get started on that t- tomorrow. <laughs> Snook can be verbose in some of her messages, but I'll tell you the one that's got her beat is Dreams Deep. Yeah. It was not uncommon for me to get up to literally walls in a DM from Dreams Deep. She'd get on a roll and she'd just write and write and write and write and write. Always had a, a chuckle when I got up to that. So yeah, it's doable apparently, Damien. I I think it is. I leave kind of short messages sometimes. Yeah, you do. But then I forget, and then I come back and leave other ones. Well, I was trying to leave that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Damien. Which has which has nothing to do with the first one. Thank you, shadows. Uh, Sorry, Damien. I didn't mean to. uh, You brought my name into it. It's not my fault. You're you're okay. Noted. (laughs) Kitty girl. The kitty girl. You are up. Well, I would just about be willing to bet money that um, I don't normally go this early in the show. And I bet money that I'm about to present the post that Ingenuity was going to share, uh, which might make him scramble for another post. <laughs> but we shall see. Um, he shared this one in, uh, in the uh, Alliance a while ago. That's why I was thinking that's probably the one he's going to pin. Yeah, I'll go grab another one. Was it Ingen? <laughs> Well, you want to go ahead and talk about it then, since this was the one you were going to do, or you want to look for another post when your turn comes oh, up? Oh, that was the one I was yeah, going to do. I'll go, I'll go find another one. You go ahead. I'll, I'll, no, i got to find I'll, another one. Okay, you two. Go find another one. Let Kitty talk. <laughs> well, I had no clue that I was going to debunk two people here, or, or bump, bump two people, I mean. Um, yeah, this post is really cool by uh, Guilty Parties. Uh, a lot of you probably are aware that there is somebody on the platform that does not have much influence, very little steam power at all, but he's hitting people um, 
like Zipporah said in this morning's session, kind of like it's little mosquito bites, you know, just an annoyance. Um, but guilty party says that it's somebody who is disillusioned with steam it and, uh, is just going around, you know, doing this. And, uh, he advises us to ignore the flags uh, if they don't do any harm to our posts, just like Ingenuity said this morning. Uh, if they do harm uh, to the post or hide any content, uh, you can ask uh, friends or the Freeze Peach team for help in uh, countering the, the comments. But currently, Guilty Parties and the Marky Mark are working together to. Um, to try to get to the bottom of this uh, in the meantime. So everybody uh, give guilty parties an upvote on his post. Uh, thank him for uh, stepping up to the plate once again and doing something to help us all out and, uh, and take a look at, at what you need to do in that post uh, if you do get hit. And that's it. Yeah, they'll, um, they'll work with Steam at the Inc. to – get the delegation that those accounts got removed so that they'll have absolutely no ability to do anything. Yeah, that would be awesome. Snook, do you want to add anything else since you were going to present that post too? <laughs> no, I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention because um, I've had more than one person that never got flagged like I did, did get upset. And that it was being worked on, and I was really glad when I saw this post. Yeah, I've had probably five or six of the, their flags, and it's always been on posts that they're already paid out. There's nothing, literally nothing they can do. Well, when I was a child, I was the type that always wanted to know why, honestly. I didn't just aimlessly go, why, Daddy, why, you know. I really wanted to know. Um I wanted to know how the world worked. And uh, so even if I had not been hit by this, I would still be curious what's going on. But um, I did get hit earlier today with a, a nuisance downvote. It did no harm. Uh, it was perfectly fine. But uh, I just hated seeing other people like Safasera and Dracos and, and all these other people, you know, that definitely didn't deserve it, you know, get hit with something like that. So I'm, I'm glad to know the why and what was going on behind it. So anyway, but I'll get back in queue to share my own post later. It's nice to know that it's not somebody gearing up to, be, to cause some real mayhem. Yeah, exactly. It's not another grumpy cat or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Or even if they're actually trying to gear up that, um, they're getting stopped cold because that delegation is going to get pulled. All right. Thank you, kitty girl. And Snook, you are up. So I watched this today, and it's really funny, and it's really good. And then he asked for feedback, and I gave him some. Um, it's strange visions cooking, and I like, what? yeah, and I really like the fact that he's cooking. I mean, it is him in his boxer shorts. Um, and I, other than a few little things that nobody else will notice, probably about me. It, it's just, it's perfect, and I want him to do more because it's its that good. And I thought it was a brilliant idea because I don't think anybody else has done, a, it, it almost it reminds me of like a food channel, you know, kind of um, premise to the cooking show. So he, and the food looks really good. So, and now I'm really hungry. But, um, it was good. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't need to hear that. So you were kind of his Oliver, and you went, "Please, sir, can I have more?" Yes, exactly. I would have. I. I don't think he, any. I would have had two, probably. <laughs> That's okay. But, you. You have wings as long as you have the text ready. You can present by text. Go ahead, Snook. Oh, but anybody who hasn't seen it really needs to watch it because it's it's done really well, and um, 
um, he did ask for feedback on it, so watch it and give your feedback and um, let him know that he should do more. Or or not, but I think he should. Sounds like a good thing. You've got the, you're on to something now, Deranged. Yeah, sound, sounds like people like it. Yeah, it, nine times out of ten, one is not a good test. You've got to kind of see what the feedback's like over th over two or three or more. But you're Fine. definitely getting the message to continue. Because if you don't, that little tag that's making the go around is going to get it implemented. Snook made me do it. <laughs> I'm going to use that on the next one, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Snook. Ingenuity. Yeah. Down so oh, there he is. Okay. I, I was going to share Guilty's dealing my Bobby up. But can you hear me? I can hear you. And nice and quiet. Okay. I, yeah, I had to switch over to my phone. My computer needed an update, and that's why my button started freezing on me. So I'm sorry if it's a little quieter. You're sorry that it's quieter? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry. I love it when you are all intent on hearing what I have to say and have to turn me up just because you're interested in what I have to say. <laughs> no, I, I, well, actually, I think you're plenty loud enough. I can hear you beautifully. Okay, I mean, great. I didn't mean quiet as in low. I meant quiet as there's no distractions or noises behind you. Oh, yes. I just gave the girls a snack about two minutes ago so I wouldn't have them crawling on me so I could properly do this. <laughs> <laughs> without them jumping all over me but um yes uh earlier there was an impromptu d live show that carrie put out uh chris roberts wrote another one of those tavern monsters medili mababis and they're gonna try and make it a regular thing i guess the steam monsters tavern and start doing it once a week outside of the playhouse the playhouse you know sim girl writes things and they write things and there's a bunch of good stuff in there but yeah, we had fun uh, on the on the little recording show today, whatever you want to call it. If you all like the stuff when, when we read it, then feel free to go over there and check it out and say, hi, Ingenuity said that you guys did this, and I totally missed it, and I wasn't there, and, and I think it's awesome, or something along that line, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it's... Yeah, because it's stuff and things. <laughs> you can tell who I talk to. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> we have to, we have to start remedial English. <laughs> English 091, because we haven't made it to 101 yet. <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah. And coffee, you're up. I wasn't even ready. That's okay. You will be in a moment. I'm nearly asleep. Do, do, I have no idea why. Just a microphone and it's just headphones. Just because it's, you know. That's where it connects. One or two o'clock in the morning and. You want to say hi? Say hi. Damien's got the same yeah, I'm still here. I know. Um, You're just give me a moment. Okay. I'll just put in videos so people can watch while, um, while we're waiting. Snook is having way too much fun playing with the new piece of software. Oh, it's so much fun. What'd you do this time? Oh, this is... um. It's a mage. It's it's cute. Ah, uh, this is the this is the one I saw. Yes, it is cute. Engine, did you check your um, DM? Not not recently. Oh, you might want to do that. Girls played outside and just came right to IPT. 
Okay, Darby, tell us about this. Okay, so yeah, I'm sharing this post by, um, I'm going to pronounce this really badly, Yidnif. <laughs> and um, I presume because she's European like me, she'll be asleep now, sensibly, and I'm not. Uh, but um, personally, the post, when I, I went through this, is absolutely fantastic. Um, a real sort of um, combination of sort of text, pictures, uh, she sings as well. It, it's just fantastic, to be perfectly honest. Um, well worth um, looking through, enjoying, and listening to as well. She does do some wonderful work. For sure, I was really impressed. Yeah. And she's got a real nice voice to go along with it. I was really impressed with the um, sort of some of the little pictures and animations she puts in as well. Um, there's a lot of work put into the whole post. It's um, quite a feast to look at, to be honest. It is. You can definitely spend some time in one of her posts. Spend about half a day, I think, <laughs> if you had the time. I don't know how long it takes her to put them together. Kitty Girl says sleep, the thing which disturbs our Steam It Discord priorities. I don't think anyone can disagree with that. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. And Coffee, I called to everyone's attention this morning your comment that uh, described this post as an explosion of joy. And Yibneth and everyone else just loved that. Uh, that was a brilliant choice of words. You touched a few hearts with that one. I keep trying my best with those <laughs> those little comments I do. Your comments are legendary. Yes, they are. Yes, I forget what post it was on the other day, but you made an absolutely outstanding comment, and I uploaded it to the best of my ability. It was pretty amazing. It was in reference to something that I can't Bring to the tip of my tongue at the moment, but yeah, you are well, pretty damn good in those How comments, buddy. Remember anyone <clears throat> I bookmarked it. It's on my computer, so when it gets done doing its updates here, then I'll, I'll pull it up. So yeah, you can put me in the queue, and that'll be my uh, that'll be my next post. Is his comment? So I want you guys to check it out. She'll put it back if it's the one I'm thinking of, it was the three hugs did a post. Uh, and it was about yes, that's the one. Yeah, it was about um, some group that had sort of um, I can't I can't really even remember now what it, what it was about exactly. But but the whole basis of my comment was that Steam it is a bit like sort of embracing multicultural um, friendship. So many people together enjoying themselves. Uh, and, um, yeah, <laughs> I spent about two hours on that comment. I uploaded it, too. Yeah, it was. It, it should have been a post, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Some amazing. of his posts would make, or comments would make good posts. Yeah, I got it all the way up to the top. Hobo Tank says, uh, coffee practices what he preaches, commenting uh, was to engage and build community, and by golly, it's working. Well, I tried that's, to leave. That's why I should go give him a witness vote. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Jan, you're back up. Better known as. Known as. And he's typing away there. There we go. There we go. This is one of my own posts, and I kind of like just ex expresses an opinion in a kind of diplomatic way not to hurt anybody's feelings conversation I overheard um, well I didn't overhear it I was around when it was taking place and this kind of represents that conversation and uh, sometimes there's no perfect answers type of thing so I wrote a post about it 
to just kind of get it out there and share the opinion that people need to come together if you want to make a difference. I gotta ask, you're honey oriented on your your uh, name. Is How are you? Story behind that. Say that again. The fourth bit, the orientated bit. I say you're honey oriented, as in the beehive and the bees and the honey. Is there a story behind story? that? Well, it's kind of like the bees' knees. You know, if you tell someone you need some bees, it's kind of like saying I need some money. So the honey represents the money type of thing, and it's just we're all coming together and putting pennies in. So we all bring back pennies to the hive, so to speak. And eventually they'll all just turn to dollars. And when they turn to steam dollars, well, then we're doing good type of thing. And we all get little bits of honey back. Okay, that makes sense. So Battle says, hey, yeah, come on, come in on a great statement. People have to come together to make a difference. And then she goes off to close 10 billion tabs to make some room. So I think she was referring to your comment, Jan. Yeah, well, it's kind of like this, the situation that went on before we had that, uh, or the conversation I'm kind of representing it. The conversation that goes on in the post is nothing to do or anything like the conversation I heard. Um, so I don't want anybody to feel like that. I'm highlighting them as in how they behave type thing. So I wrote the same situation kind of a bit differently to express the same feeling or the same thought. And at the end of it, it's kind of like um, I conclude, I can't remember the exact words now, but I conclude with that is people that are there that have power are aware of these situations, but they choose to ignore them. Yeah. And it's kind of emphasizing something that was said that's like, Doing nothing sometimes is probably worse than doing something. Yeah, <clears throat> the conversation you heard was inspiration for this. True enough? True enough. Yeah, I would say so, yeah, to, to get that point out, yeah. Yeah. Understandable. Gonna have to give that a good check out. Thank you, Jan. And Hobo Tang, you are up. Oh, okay. Hang on a sec, Hobo Tang. Snook's got a question. So, at the, yeah, at the bottom of your post, you have this account is protected by Dell Sweeper, which is really nice. But and I'd like to put that on mine so people don't, you know, feel they can leave a one cent of thought or, or whatever. Because that's a nice indicator, you know what I mean, for everybody. Okay, it's okay to just post it in chat. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Hobotang, the floor is yours. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? So um, this was shared this I'm here to pimp. So this is another developing a really old film from 1979. And I uh, got some really good results out of it. Said a couple words. Developed it in coffee, which... And uh, you should check it out. It's a nice short read with some cool pictures. And Amelia is in there, too. Yes, she is. All right. Engine says Yeah, inspired and in Yeah, and uh, it's a, an old motion picture film, but uh, it's super cool. And uh, it's really just to encourage people to get out and shoot some film. It's a dying art, but we want to keep it alive. So the pictures that are here, were they taken in 1979 or recently? develop for each theme it posts so um those have uh, been taken in the past week or two okay sounds good <laughs> k 
Skinny Girl says, Hold on, I don't use know, the coffee I'm too... to develop the film. <laughs> Trust Kitty to spot that one. Thank you, Hobotang. And the range vision. You. You're up. Oh, snap. Going. Now what do I do? Somebody shared mine. Shared mine. Oh, I've been <laughs> pushing the wrong button. Hold on. Ah, uh, no wonder we didn't hear button, you. Button, button. Who's got the button? <laughs> you know what that's from? That's that's the original Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. With Gene Wilder. All right, there we go. So this post is the debut post of from my daughter, um, her very first post here on Steemit. Um, her account is called Poetic Angel. She is going to be posting photography, um, also doing some of her poetry, and. She's probably going to make some videos. She she was in the the one cooking video with me. She's also going to be doing videos of some of her sign language stuff. Uh, oh, there goes one of my dogs barking. But, uh, yeah, so this is her very first post. So if you guys want to show some encouragement, um, she'd probably appreciate it. It's beautiful pictures. That, f that first one there, you can see, you know, you can almost imagine there's a conversation taking place. Did she do an introduce yourself post yet, or or see if you can if she'll answer twelve questions from from Tang? What was that? The dog's barking too much. Has she done an an introduce yourself, introduce myself post yet? Maybe you can encourage her to do a, one of the 12 questions ones that, that Hobotank started a while back. Oh, I'll have to look that one up. I was telling her to hold off on the introduce yourself post until she got um, some more followers. I've been having her go around and comment on people's stuff for a while before she started doing any posts. Good plan. The, that was Hobotank's, right? That that came up with the 12 questions? 12 questions, yeah. It was yeah, that's, that's a, that would be a, for her age, that would be a perfect one for her to do. So Battle X says, husky lover, but you better be able to chill because they howl. They're wolf-like, great guard dogs. Also, they are the best warming blankets. Oh, yeah, and our husky's having a, a hard time right now because it's like 100 degrees outside. Yeah. And there's a picture there that Deranged took a poetic angel. Yep, that's her. Photographer taking the photographer. Yeah, she's learning. She's doing good. How old did you say she was? She just barely turned 13. I told her she had to wait until she was 13 to get her account. Nice. Well, let's hope she stays motivated with it. It'll be a great investment for her. Oh, I think she will be. She sees how much I'm on it. Oh, good. Now we just got to get my wife to be more active on it. She's going to have to if she wants to be in the in group. Yeah, I know. She's going to have to fight my daughter for the other computer, though. <laughs> great fun and games. Thank you, Deranged. Thank you. Rhonda K. Are you there? Yes, she's there. Yep, I'm here, and I'm back with my editing post from this morning. Snook approved. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is uh, a post from the Writer's Block about our new workshop, our Editing 101. And the reason it's Editing 101 is because we're we're starting with the very basics. We have some new um, people who are joining this and, you know, we don't, we want to kind of keep it 
I don't want to say simple because it's not really simple, but we want to keep it basic for the people who are coming in and get more complicated as we go. But um, in this editing workshop, we're taking apart pieces that are published by well-known authors. Um, we can do that under the fair use because it's educational purposes. Um, so the first piece that we took, I think everybody was a little surprised to find out who actually wrote it because we had a lot of editing to do on it. We're going to try to do this workshop about once a week. We're pretty excited about it because we can really dig in and get a lot of, uh, get a lot of points across without putting people on the defensive with it being their own work. So before we start to edit their work, we're going to make sure that people are very well immersed in the editing process and understand why things are the way they are. And sometimes you learn more by seeing mistakes in other people's work than you do by be having them pointed out to you in your own work. So anyway, if you've ever thought about joining Critique but are a little, you know, nervous about it because of the, you know, that's your work that you're, you know, kind of afraid to have on the chopping block, uh, this is the perfect way to get your feet wet because um, this group is rep – there's a cross-section of everybody in it. There were people who had never had any exposure to the editing process, right down to people who have uh, been doing this for a long time. It went really well, the first meeting that we had. Um, so next Tuesday evening at about 6 o'clock p.m., we will do this again, and I'm willing to do this at different times to accommodate people in different time zones. So if you're interested, let me know, and we will make sure you get in on the next session. And as we talked about this morning, you can come in at any point. It's not like you, you know, missed two or three sessions and now you can't catch up. All right. Thank you, Rhonda. Damien, you're up. Oh, hey, okay, let me just quickly drop my link in. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm sure a lot of you know I've been gradually rolling out um, my poetry editing 101 series, and this is the last post. So um, the idea of it is, that you you follow the course and it and it will if you if you follow it it will it will take you from the very basics of poetry up to the point where you you'd be happily able to send your poems out to publishers um and poetry journals and you know have them taken seriously um it really looks week on week at the most common mistakes that are made by novice poets and how to remedy them. So, um, and, and it's, it gives examples as well. So I'm, I'm kind of sad that it's the last one, but I'm pleased about the course and I, I think it's self-contained. Um, and you know, for any of you who are, are running writing servers or, um, at any kind of server where, where you're talking to poets, just feel free to roll this out. You know, this is a resource that should be, um, people should be feel free to use. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, all over. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start another series soon. I think, um, I'm, um, weighing up ideas and things at the moment, but yeah. Um, and eventually I'll get back to, um, poetry, um, and, and probably do either something on form or uh, something on the dark arts of poetry, uh, which, uh, yeah, should be fun. So, uh, yeah, check it out, and thank you. All right. Hey, I'm going to pin this over in uh, Poets United, oh, too. I, what? <laughs> she had an opinion on the matter. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, Shadows, and thank you, NGA. And Kitty Girl. You're um, did I get back in the queue again? I was going to, but I didn't think I had. You did. Yeah, you, you, you said, said you wanted, you wanted to, to be there while you were doing the end of your last one. 
Yeah, I just didn't think I had actually done it. Okay. Um, all right. Here comes the link. <laughs> We're just too good tonight. Okay. You can have some fun under the night sky if you go out right after dark. There is a very bright star in the western sky uh, going down right where the sun did. That is Venus. And if you have a really good pair of binoculars, you might be able to see the disk of Venus. Venus actually goes through phases just like the moon does. You can see a crescent at sometimes and um, so forth. Um, and then if you look back to the south a little bit, you'll see Jupiter. And then a little bit uh, east of that, you'll see Saturn. And those will just appear to be stars. But if you have, um, like I said, binoculars, you'll be able to see just a little tiny disk of the planet. It won't be real big, but you can see it. Um, also, you can look for tiny little star-like objects really close to Jupiter. That's the moons of Jupiter. There's actually dozens of moons, but four of those <clears throat> that were discovered by Galileo were called the Galilean moons. They look like um, look like stars real close to Jupiter, and as you go out night after night, you can see how they're going around and around. They're changing positions. It's really cool. And then a little bit later on at night, when Venus is set, Mars is coming up, and it, it'll look as a beautiful, and I mean gorgeous here lately. It's been really stunning, uh, reddish-orange star that's shining very, very brightly. And you can uh, see the disk of Mars with binoculars, too. And um, then you can start to look for other stuff. There are uh, a couple of uh, really pretty star groupings nearby. You can see Scorpius. Uh, which is the constellation that um, the astrologers call Scorpio, but ast astronomers call it Scorpius. Um, and it's a little bit below and to the right of Saturn. And then just below Saturn, you can see another little grouping of stars that's actually part of the constellation Sagittarius. Uh, that little grouping is called the Teapot. And um, it's it's really awesome little cute grouping of stars that anybody should be able to pick out very easily. And then rising out of the uh, teapot spout is the steam of the Milky Way, which is just a view of our galaxy edge on. So, yeah, lots of stuff you can see out there. And, I mean, that's just scratching the surface of what's there for anybody who is a serious stargazer. But it's definitely a great place to start and something fun to do on a summer evening. Thank you. Thank you, kitty girl. You put a lot of work into that post. Well done. Yes, it, it's absolutely fabulous. I love that one. I did put a lot of work into it, and I'm really grateful for the attention. <clears throat> and I'm glad to hear people are enjoying it. That's fantastic. <laughs> for sure. Thank you. And Chris Bird. Since, I have I have a question real quick before before Chris goes. Um, okay. since you're into the astronomy, Kitty, are you familiar as to when like the next meteor showers and stuff are supposed to happen? You know, I used to keep up with all of that very carefully um, in my younger days, but I don't get out looking for meteors so much anymore. But I know about in mid-August. Uh, there's supposed to be a really good meteor shower. Then there's a lot of tiny meteor showers that. Uh, take place all through the year, but there's only, you know, three or four really, really big ones. But, yeah, mid-August, the Perseids will come around. That'll be one to look for. I will be watching this, guys. <laughs> all right. And just so that people are aware, in the giveaway channel, there is a giveaway running. And if you go and click the emoji, then when it runs out, you'll be in the running. And Chris? Tell us about your post. Oh, it's just the same old, same old. My wife and I acting like assholes. <laughs> well, that's quite a description. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what kind of an asshole were you acting like oh, this wow. week? <laughs> well, we were we were being assholes to the uh, two people that uh, did actually send in. One was uh, literally a shit post, and the other one was the our wedding uh, photographer, or sorry, our wedding videographer who did not ever give us our video. Aha. Uh -huh. 
And did you get anywhere with that? Oh, I don't know. We just he sent a, a thing and said, "Oh, I see you guys do advice online. Uh, I'm putting my place up on B and B for a few weeks, and would it be all right if I come out and stayed with you?" And so we kind of put them over the coals. Sound fair? Was he bringing the uh, the video out with him? That was the one question we said. If he did bring the video, we might be able to find a shed for him to sleep in. Oh, that moved him up from the doghouse. Well, that's actually right attached to the chicken house, so I don't know if it's better or not. <laughs> Uh-oh. Snook just informed us that she's going to have to write you a letter. Yes, you should, Snook, because uh, we're also starting this week to give out uh, one SBD for whoever's uh, letters make it into the into the video. Could get oh. interesting. <laughs> if you do that, though, you should give out SBI. I don't even know what that is. Um, you, well, because then you, both people, um, uh, shadows. SBI is Steam Basic Income. It's a, uh, it's a program that's run by a fellow by the name of Joe Savage. So the idea is, is that you send him a Steam and nominate the person like for example um, say you won the, the giveaway I would send him I would send steam basic income one steam and I'd say give that to Chris Bird and then he he sets you up with, with a share and I get a share at the same time so oh, okay sorry I that. oh sorry yeah no I, I did I've, I'm on steam basic income I, I've done it a few times with a few people that I liked uh like their posts, I just thought it was a, a nice way of me and them getting something. I never even thought of doing that as a giveaway, but yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it kind of conserves your Steam um, SBDs, and and it benefits everybody. Yeah, that's for sure. And also, uh, all I have is SBDs. I don't even have one Steam to uh, do, so I'm going to have to change them in anyhow. Yeah, right I'm now, not a rich he, He's only taken uh, Steam. At one point, he was taking both. Well, I, I can always transfer over. I'm, I'm waiting. It seems to be creeping down a little bit here now, so I might convert some over. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, anyhow, my Chris? boss is standing here staring at me in the window, so I should probably get to work. <laughs> the nerve of them expecting you to work. I know, it's like 10 minutes till we're off. I, I shouldn't have to do anything else. Seems fair. Well, thanks a lot, Shadows, and everybody else, and you guys have a great day. I have been listening along. I just uh, haven't been able to participate. Oh, well, it's good to know you're listening. Thank you, Chris. And you have wings. You are up. She's going to present by text. Give her a chance there to get her link in there. There we go. Okay, well, that's short and sweet. Beautiful imagery and for ocean conservation. So we've got a poem here, and it's by Raj808. There's some nice photos there. Give that a look over. And... Roger. Yeah, Raj808 has uh, got some really good stuff. I've seen him before. He's in the Steam, Steam It bloggers that I'm in, and I believe he's also in the Alliance, too, isn't he, Engine? Who? Raj808. 808, yeah. He's quiet, but he's there. Good stuff. Thank you. And thank you, You Have Wings. Snook, you're up. And you have wings, I guess, just turned the PYPT attendee role? Yes, you did. Thanks for paying attention to that, kitty girl. Okay, so um, over weeks, people have brought up the free rate group. 
and that um, this guy, as you can see by all the chapters, every day takes the free write writing prompt and is continuing this story. So now he's on chapter seven, and it's a really great story. Um, and he just literally does about five minutes of it. And then when he gets a chapter done, he goes back and re-edits the chapter. Um, but it's really neat, and it's a really good story, and it's a little sci-fi, and it's a little Western. And I, how he does it day after day after day, I have no idea. But it's so... But again, it's making up his own rules, um, which is kind of the whole part of uh, the Marion West free write um, uh, thing, is you can use it any way you want. Oh, Sci-fi and Western, Titty Girl says, makes an interesting mix. And there's his area's got back to see us. Yeah, it's a really cool story. really, And, and it has um, uh, gods in it. What one is a duck? A duck god? Did you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Duck it, 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 yeah. Well, it was you. Ha one of the prompts was a picture of this um, Trojan horse duck, and so he <laughs> became a god in a it. Trojan duck. <laughs> a Trojan horse duck. Yeah. <laughs> And that became a god. And I mean, it's amazing what this guy has done with the prompts and, and, and weaved them into the story like so well. So, and, and again, he's been doing this for forever. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that because um, just another way that the prompts can be used to get you writing every day and, and, you know, using your imagination and your creativity or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and well, it would be a name of a very interesting condom, yes. And Azaria says, Snook sent me the cutest MP4 with the face ring thingy. Yes, she's having way too much fun there, Azaria. Yeah, I yeah, don't Battle Axe got the, she had said Medusa, and I put the Medusa one up. But I don't think she saw it. I love it so much. Ah, Safi Sarah has joined us. Kitty Girl says, I pimped your flower post this morning, but you should present it now. The one with the beautiful orange lilies. And Battle did see Medusa. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Snook. Ingenuity, you are back up. One second, pass the next person, and I'll go. Okay, that would be coffee then. I'm not ready. Oh. No, I am ready. <laughs> it's all right. I've stopped eating my biscuits. Hang on. Oh, okay. No, I'm there. I'm good. Well, I say I'm good, but I'm still trying to do things. Engine's PC is done updating. Did that work? There is Hang a on. link in there, yes. It's so doing something. Woo! Pardon? It did something. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I've got biscuit everywhere. It's bad. Um, so this is um, from the Alliance Witness Kitchen Fairy. Um, I think from yesterday, actually. Kind of bad news, actually, because uh, she got a, a family car broken into, which is <laughs> no one's good day. Um but she does say she offered to power down to her husband um, to pay for the damage, but um, they're going to muddle through anyway. So um, it'd be nice just for everyone to give her a little bit of support there. Um, not a nice thing for anyone to go through. And uh, I know she's doing a lot in the community at the moment, the Kitchen Fairy, um, in her own uh, little areas as well. So a bit of support would be uh, very much uh, appreciated. Uh, now I'm going to eat my biscuit. Okay. Sometimes um, real life gets imitated in fiction because the the prompt for the character sketch that was being done over in the writer's block yesterday was you come out and find your car stolen. 
that would have been just a <laughs> little bit too close to home for the kitchen fairy. Oh, That's man. what I was just sitting here thinking, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a shame that her car insurance wouldn't cover the damage. Why? No, the weird thing is, I don't even think they have insurance over there. Um, She's in Canada, isn't she? Yeah, she's in Canada, in it, British Columbia, way up close to Alaska. It's illegal to drive without car insurance. You see, I thought that, but when I asked about insurance, she said something about that they didn't have any because it wasn't worth having insurance or something. Ooh, that's not good. Well, well she lives in a small town, I think. Maybe they can get by with it there. I don't know. <laughs> it might just be um, she has third-party insurance, but not, like, for damage to the car. Yeah, she may have just put the basics on. Just enough to keep it legal. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a shame. Yeah. Well, especially if it happens to be an older vehicle, quite often you do just go go to the basics. All right. Thank you, Coffee. And Ingenuity, are you ready to roll? I believe so. I remember what button I put for push to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Beth. Okay. Any, any theft of trust hurts. Um, you, 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 you all know I like the posts that are fuzzy and feel good and stuff like that because I think there's a lot of negativity going around that, that doesn't necessarily need to be going around. So... Uh, Mary Ann wrote this. It's actually an answer to a contest, but the, the post itself is pretty good. It talks about her favorite workplace for Steam It, which, from the picture, as you can tell, is obviously outside on what appears to be her deck. There's a bunch of good pictures in there about her doggies and their interaction, and a few other animals that I will let you read for yourself to find out what they are that help her through her day and <laughs> keep her motivated to, to post and and her wits about her. It's pretty good. I like Marianne. She's, if people don't know who she is, she's the one that came up with the whole free ride and, and helps uh, organize the free ride house over there. She's pretty awesome for those that don't know her. But yes, stop in, show your support, say, yeah, this is where I do my steaming or whatever you want to do. Maybe even want to enter Golden Dawn's contest. Who knows? But yes, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Thank you, Engine. And Battle, who made you Satan? She'll tell us eventually. Oh, okay. I think she's talking about that, that face thing. Oh, okay. That's what she was doing earlier. All right. Thank you. Luna, you're up. Oh, okay. Rhonda said that battle cannot be Satan because she's Satan, according to some. Well, I'm I'm the Lord of Darkness, so. <laughs> yeah, but Rhonda, those are people in Tar Taswell. They don't count. I just like to say that all those people are angels. What you're trying to say? <laughs> oh, there's Luna. Just jump back into the channel. Luna, you're up. Maybe having some connection difficulties. Don't see her typing. Ah, she said, wait. You want us to wait, or are you passing to the next person for an hour, Luna? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't see her typing, so I don't think it's the link going in. She must be having a connection issue. a 
moment there. Yeah, she's hopped out again. It's got to be a connection issue. Can you hear me? Now we can. Yes. Oh, now you just went robotic. Try again. Can you hear me now? Much clearer. Okay, sorry. Oh, here we go. There's well, the link. There's my link. Um, my post is about a contest where the of um, drawing that I did today. Well, it's a painting that I did with watercolors. And it's about a dolphin that it's colored Atlantic white sided dolphin and there's my my step by step and also i give some information about this animal and something about their population where they live and that's it every day i hope you enjoy it i'm sorry my connection is really bad <laughs> that's okay you got it out that's what matters thank you luna uh, and I'm, I'm sorry that I have not been here um, on some time. I have been, I, I had problems with my family and stuff, but I'm fine now. And I'm going to try to be here more often. Well, that'd be nice to see. I'm glad things worked out with your family. Thank you. Yeah, we missed you. Glad you came. Yes. And you have wings. You're up. And hopefully you got your text ready this time. <laughs> Jan says the whales get all the publicity. Someone has to do a post on the life of a plankton. And there we go. All right. You have wings, writes. Benji gives a very detailed explanation of the piccolo violin and its history. Importance because this instrument is now extinct. He compares it to other stringed instruments like the violin. This is extinct, as in nobody has them, or they're not made anymore. Yeah, they don't. They don't make them anymore. Surprising. Obviously, it wasn't a popular sale item, or they would have continued to make them. Yeah, you want to talk about the world's smallest violin? The world's smallest violin? Smiliest <laughs> violin. <laughs> That's the smiliest violin I've ever seen. <laughs> I've, I've seen some people do some phenomenal music on violins. It's a talent if, when they've got it. Oh, yeah. Well, and you have wings has dropped two posts by other people um, in the chat, but there is a current post we can vote on uh, that I think is lovely. If it's okay, if I drop it in. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. It's a minimalist black and white shot. Um, and I, I think that is just lovely. A dandelion with a lake in the background. Uh, I think that is really creative and pretty. I like that. Is. Lonely little dandelion looking out over the water. So yeah, I'd say give that one some love too, people. Yep, for sure. And thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, what are you trying to find on Nitro uh, Battle Axe? Oh. Well, Discord has had some problems today. And Engine, you're up. So now the wanna drop isn't so like I keep pushing the other I changed my push to talk button so and, and I forget that I changed so I so I Pushed the old one and, and now I'm just going back and forth. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna go look for my small tiny violin. This, the, yeah, this this particular post I think is pretty undervalued, personally. Um, it's from Chichi, my Chichi doll, my Chichi 23 over there. Uh, the title, it, it was I found it, I came across it when in the drop of the bucket earlier this week when they wrote it for it and Shadow did one too on, on changes. There were a bunch of good ones in there. Uh, but this one I can relate to being a father myself. That's, that's the day everything changed for her. Holy crap, that is a huge uh, ramble icon there. That's awesome. <laughs> I just say it. But um, yeah, go read it and listen to her story about being a parent and the challenges that she now faces in being a parent. It's real well written. Good stuff, I think. It should yeah. be worth about two times as much post. as it is. <laughs> well, you definitely made me notice it, Battleaxe. Yeah, well, uh, Discord's been Discordin', to put it mildly. Yeah, it has been. Alright, thank you, Engine. Bluefin, did you find that little violin? I can Ah, uh, I hope everybody is having a wonderful day today. I uh, did a short little post about um, about my mom. She's been struggling with some stuff, and uh, it's a picture of my brother and my mom. My mom's been losing a lot of weight lately in the nursing home that she's in, and it's just a little picture of mom snuggling with my brother and the fears that we're going, my brother and I are going through now. Hey, it's hard to watch them go, isn't it? It is. It is indeed. But she looks pretty content there. Well, she, you know, when one of the two of us is there, she's always happy. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before. She lives in the moment, struggling with dementia, and so doesn't really, not really aware of what's going on around her, but when she sees somebody that she recognizes, which is pretty much just my brother and I at this point, um, you know, she perks up a little, so. No, it's good. Thank you, Bluefin. Thanks for having us. You have, you have Wing says, so sorry, such a loving, sweet, loving photo. Kitty Girl says, I feel for you having gone through this myself. It's definitely a difficult road for everyone, and your family is often in my thoughts and prayers. Yeah, I appreciate that all. All right. Thank you, Bluefin, and battle. You're up. Oh, Lord. Okay. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, says. I was just leaving a comment. I'm ready. You're ready. Okay, you rock. So, <laughs> I have multiple sort of lives on Steam It. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. Um, anyways, to get to the point of the post, which is the point of the show, is I'm doing a little series that is multifaceted. It's about sirens and sharks. It's taking it and making it like the steam it experience where we get on and we're new and we're just like sailing around. We find people that are like-minded. We get harpoons. We may get cannonballs thrown at us or sirens trying to get us. Um, the first three of them go to TAR, uh, the Alliance, half of the SBDs on payout. Let me just, uh, let me also for two new witnesses or newer witnesses, coffee and sapphic. And so, of course, I like to make win-win situations because I also like to have nice things and I'm not a martyr. But I also don't want to see people being martyrs on here that are really good and need to rise up, in my opinion. And so I did this whole weird fictional situation thing, and I hope you like it. The end. Thank you. And she just might <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. 
Thank you so much. I just, I just gave, I talked to Sapphic yesterday and gave her, gave her my witness vote. Well, seems like she's pretty passionate about the blockchain, so be looking forward to see what. Oh yeah. She was. She's, she's awesome. I'm, I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to wrangle Sapphic over here. It's hard because she's in Australia, but um, she's a newer user and a newer witness, but she's very, very um, community minded and, and such. Well, thank you for that ingenuity. Who I yeah, I'm, I have all my witness votes are done. I have all thirty filled up now. And I was looking for one earlier this week, and I noticed <laughs> that she was running. And so yeah, I said, come talk to me. I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Yada yada yada. Yeah, she seems to have her head on straight. So I w I would endorse her if anybody has any witness votes left and you're looking for somebody to support. Sapphic would probably be a good one. Yeah, I mean she's incredibly intelligent to the point where I talk to her and I'm just like I have no damn idea about Python code versus Raspberry Pi and and that. So anyway, appreciated. Yeah, yeah. I know that I enjoy a well made Raspberry Pi. So I just made a note there that there's a few minutes left in the giveaway channel to click the emojis and it's going to be going off. And you have wings. You are up. That was quick. And anybody's holding back. The queue is empty. You know I got posts. <laughs> well, I'm giving you a fair warning. All right, I shall fetch it for you. So, what do we got here? Even more murals from Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And she says, Lynn, this is a post by Lynn Coyle 1. And she says, Lynn is capturing murals in her local Playa del Carma. And they are nice murals. Yeah, that's pretty fabulous there. We have a... Very well done. Just, do you know the artists who did the murals? Does it say in the post? I haven't got the post yet. I'll get there in a uh, I don't see any mention. We have two or three murals that have been done here in this community. One of them actually is on the front of our Legion branch. Cool. I really feel sorry for Lynn Coyle and her situation. Her husband has got cancer and they're they're dealing with it and it it's it's really a taxing thing. He's hanging on though and they're getting some of their some joy in, in his last days, but and hopefully I don't know if the treatments are going to help him to live just a little bit longer or not, but it it is a beautiful, wonderful story that they've got going on there. Yeah, you have wings. That's totally true. And since I lost my own husband to cancer several years ago, whenever somebody else is going through that, my heart really, really goes out to them. Yeah, that's understandable. Beautiful colors in those murals, that is for sure. Thank you for uh, bringing that to us, you have wings. And Kitty Girl, you are up. Well, if Safasara is not going to share her own post, darn it, I'm going to mm. pimp it again. <laughs> I really, really love these flowers in this post. Uh, yeah, currently Safasara is on a, a bit of a vacation, a holiday, and she's spending a lot of her time <clears throat> uh, hanging around garden places and planting flowers and things. And she has got some gorgeous flowers in this post. Uh, I really like those orange lilies. Um, in fact, we've got orange lilies or lilies that are growing here in this yard. Uh, in fact, I actually shared a a picture of uh, some of them recently, and I've got more to share. I just have been so busy with other posts. Um, but I think those orange lilies are so gorgeous and, and, and cheerful. 
And then there's another flower that somebody said this morning they thought might be some variety of a tulip. I just think that is stunning, absolutely stunning. A little bit of pink, a little bit of orange, a splash of yellow in there. Those are just the most gorgeous flowers. I want to know what they are so I can plant some of those in my yard. But, um, you know, Safasara's posts are always really, really good to um, take a look at because they're always feel-good posts, full of positive energy, full of lovely photographs and and cute little animations and stuff. I think she does a wonderful, wonderful job on on her posts. So, yeah, give Safasara a little bit of love, even if she's too shy to get on mic with us this time. That could be a fully open peony. No, the peony was in more of a bush. Yeah, I thought at first it looked a bit like a peony too, but the plant doesn't uh, go along with the peony plant construction. Yeah, I've got a peony at the side of the house here. It's quite bushy. Yeah, and I want to know what this is so I can have one too. I think it's gorgeous. Beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. Thank you, kitty girl. And Ninjin, you are up. Oakley Tokley. Are y'all are y'all familiar? Just, y'all just, f- just a moment. Snook, okay. are you present? Snook, are you present? The Snook dropped out a while back. She said she had to go. Uh oh. Damien, are you present? I'm here. You're here. You have an SBI. Way, thank you. Congratulations. Woo-hoo. That's really lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, go ahead, Engine. Are y'all familiar that that uh, Shadow and Artemis have a new show right now? Started a couple weeks ago. The Curation Corner. Yes, no, maybe so. I'm familiar with it. No. Oh, that's good. Um, I, I, I was lucky and got to be the guest on it this week, and we had a little fun. Um, but, uh, yes, that is the recap. Y'all should definitely go check it out and support the Gravelin Radio. Show them some love, because yeah. that's what this whole server is show. now. It's Ramblin' Radio, yeah. D-Live and, and all that good stuff. Three or four, how many, there'd be five shows. There's five shows now. Five now. One starts next week, yeah. Yeah, Some I'll, I'll be starting the show next week. Ingenuity, he's gonna host that. <laughs> yeah, Word, Words with Witty is coming soon to be live near you. <laughs> yeah, look look for that next week uh, here in, in the Ramble, too. It'll be Friday's the uh, same time as the Curation Corner. 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. But yeah, that was a really see. fun show. Also, go listen to the replay. It was awesome. And next yes. week's guest is Carl Nash. That ought to that be a really be a, good one. That would be a good one. Yeah. The I'm next one, if, if he doesn't get called to work, should get interesting as well. It would be Cat Weasel. Oh, man, I definitely have to use this. Yeah. So there will be well, Carl Nash be next week, there. and then in <laughs> two weeks is Cat Weasel. But he's, he's buffered it by if I don't get called to work. So we'll see what develops there. Yeah, that would be an awesome one, too. Both of those sound like wonderful guests. Should be interesting. And next up is Hobotang. Oh, no, I wasn't quite ready. Let me get my link. Okay, grab your link. We've got a moment or two. Cat Weasel's awesome for those of you that don't know who he is. He's one of the gatekeepers over there at the Steam Engine. And he leaves just some crazy comments. We went on hiatus a while back. Shadow was chasing us around the world. It's pretty fun. (laughs) Yeah, there was something that he said that I was supposed to take umbrage to. So the two of you skedaddled. I forget what it was now. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't remember either. I think it was um, Enchanted Spirit kind of basically said, 
she's going to kick the hell out of you. And he took off. <laughs> Something to that effect, yeah. <laughs> okay, hold the tank. Go ahead. All right, sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you for everybody's patience. So this is... Uh... Amelia's first Wednesday walk post. Um, I thought it was excellent. I actually had a, a lot of fun. We went to the American Museum of Science and Energy in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in East Tennessee. Um, it was really strange. The lower level was uh, completely dedicated to Oak Ridge, the secret city, uh, which were, which was um, uh, built for the Manhattan Project. Uh, which built the atom bomb. And uh, I kind of had mixed feelings about it. It was really strange the way they portrayed it uh, to the public. Um, made it seem like it was a really good thing when I thought it was actually a very sad thing. Um, so it's a cool post, though. Uh, check it out. Amelia did a, a really great job writing it, and there's some wonderful photos in there. Now, how is he saying too much? Oh, nope, nobody's supposed to know that we've got underground bunkers over here in Tennessee. There's a reason I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good post. I, I saw that earlier it, today. There's one picture in there I really like because, you know, Tank's got these really long dreads and he's, you, you'll see it. He's standing by <laughs> that side. That was just awesome. I cracked me up, man. I thought that was a funny picture, too. And it, it's really weird about the Secret City, though, that the United States kept the uh, kept it a secret um to all of these people who were working in the american military to what they were doing nobody knew they were actually creating this bomb so it was, it's a really interesting story go go look at it i'm saying too much now <laughs> go check it out thank you hope tank thank you carrie allen you're up is carrie still with us yeah she's, she's talking there. i see her she's listening on um D Live, I think. So, are you, you coming in to tell us about this, Carrie? Hold on, have to change my voice options. Ah, yes, the push to talk. Give her a moment there to get switched over. Yeah, she's okay, hi. probably still set up for her show. Well, no, I thought I, I'm on the phone, so I, I hope you can hear me. So I totally thought I was set up to ready to go. Everything was go. I had all my buttons ready to push, and then it went in and says, you are not authorized to do this with open voice. And I was like, but it was muted. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I dropped the link, I think, successfully in there now because it's push to talk. I can't go back to look, but it's in there. You did. That you is... Did. Cool. So that hilarious story, Chris wrote the new Steam Monsters Tavern um, episode for this week, this morning. And then he goes, hey, do you think we can produce this and like do it live and actually do it before tomorrow? Because normally all of the scripts that we do on the Playhouse on Friday nights on my live show at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And the Steam Monster Tavern is one of the regular ones we do. But Chris has to work tomorrow, so he was going to miss it. <laughs> so we sent the script to Ingenuity and SimGirl. And we were like, hey, guys, can you look this over real quick? And then we did some editing. We made some sound effects. We did the, the new theme song, which is just hilarious and obnoxious. And um, la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's, it's, it's funny. Um, so, yeah, the post is because the script is there. And I don't know if Chris updated the DLive post. My post, if you find it for the same thing, um, has a link to the DLive so you can see it. And on DLive, it says where to start listening to just hear the show. It starts at like 14 minutes in. And then you can hear the show. It's like 10 or 11 minutes long. It's hilarious and worth the listen. But give Hub some upvote because he, he writes them every week and writes all the scripts for me. And so, yeah, it's really fun. And Ingenuity was hilarious. And so was SimGirl. And I figured out how to do sound effects inside of Discord voice channel. So I was playing with all that. And it was a really good time. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Good stuff. Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. <laughs> the range gets his little Hopefully voice. they can find it, Carrie. I dropped the um the D Live post earlier in here. Because I had fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was super fun. It, we watched it afterwards again, Engine. Like we watched all of us and we were still cracking up the whole damn time just watching us crack up at you. <laughs> That's awesome. So 
Bluefin's made a uh, comment in regards to uh, Hovatang's post. The, the plus uh, is, without all the research into the bomb, we would know nothing about nuclear medicine for treating cancer. That's true. Uh, there are some aspects of war that ends up translating into civilian life. A lot of the medical advances that were made after the Second World War took place because of some of the horrific injuries they dealt with. An interesting fact, well, up until recently anyway, if you were going to get shot, the best place in the world to get shot was Northern Ireland. Because they were used to dealing with them. Yet they had like daily incidents of dealing with gunshot wounds. They just had so much experience that they became an institution for teaching all around the world. Yeah, good coming out of horror. Thank God for that. Thank you, Carrie. Injun, you're back up. <laughs> good point, Bluefin. Best place to get what, what shot would be in the pinky. Girl says, Carrie, I've tried to catch your show past couple of weeks, but D Live wouldn't cooperate. She's rooting for you. Okay, Engine. I, ha I have a restless child, well, not restless, but a little upset at the moment, trying to appease her. But yes, um, that is the new fantastic post from the Alliance. Uh, a few of them have been shared this morning. And, and a couple other shows, but not all of them. Um, they're all pretty fantastic. I like them all. That's why I put them in there. All worthy of your attention. I'm not so much worried that you go and vote my post. Um, I'm more interested in you guys, you know, going and supporting those fantastic authors that are in the post. So, if you want to take your time after your voting power heals a little bit from PYPT today, then you know I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate you for that. But <laughs> there's definitely some good posts in there, people. Yeah, some of those we talked about in the uh, curation corners as well. Yeah, Kitty's is in there. Kitty got curated on that. But yeah. Fun with the stars post. One that I really liked was uh, Blue Light Bandits. He has a post about the most generous man on earth. That's where I suggest you start. Yes, quite agree. Well, I found something even better than Curie, that um, post promoter slash post curator project. It's uh, run by Yabak Matt. Um, it gave me a much bigger upvote than Curie did. I was thrilled. It, it was awesome. Is that something that's fairly new? I think it is. I'd never heard of it before until they hit my post, and I went out to find out who is this that gave me such a big upvote. It was a thirty-something dollar upvote, uh, which oh, Curie's not been this. giving me anything that big lately. And then I found, um, yeah, yeah, but Matt is uh, one of the people behind it, and it appears to be fairly new. And there's uh, a person named Crystal Human that I've bumped into in Whale Shares that is one of their uh, primary curators. The post promoter itself is uh, Yub or Matt, or whatever you want to call him. That's his his main bot, which is yeah. a lot of the other bots run their code from. Is the one that he wrote for that. And yeah, he just started that about a month ago. So yeah, I think um, you, you'll you'll be seeing it more. I think Booster started that um, trend when they started giving out some some upvotes Free up on the code and. Ah. Post from it, started doing it too, which is really cool. For a while, Appreciator was doing it. They they do like a daily curation post where they pick three to five posts and build a whale. I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but they had one different post that they selected too. But I don't know. Good good to see some of those people that are making bank over there giving back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. 
thank you. And what? Your... <laughs> what that is crack? What is that? It's cracking me up. Is that a googly eye on somebody's mouth? Pardon me. Coffee posted a gift in there. It's cracking me up. <laughs> I target all the ambassador. Of the I target all the ambassador of the great of the Luvian Empire. <laughs> Kitty girl, you're up. Okie doke, I thought I'd share another one of my posts that might bring some smiles to people's faces. Um, I've lived in the South all my life. Um, I don't know if this phenomenon exists anywhere else in the country, but if you get away from uh, cities and out into the rural areas, you start to see interesting little things. Um, there's quite a bit of rural kitsch down here. Uh, people will get old um, signage and hang it on their barns and sheds and things. And um, so I made a picture of this shed. I thought it was really cool how they were preserving these old signs. And then there's a, a couple of pieces of farming equipment, old and rusted, sitting there in front of the shed that I thought was really interesting. And it made a beautiful little picture. And then, as I was preparing this post uh, the other day, um, I went into uh, Google Maps to uh, pull up the latitude, longitude of the spot where I made the picture, uh, which I normally do on my old barn photos, and and took a look at the the street view there. And apparently, they have moved the shed from where it used to be, close to the road, further back away from the road, and there's another old shed that they've either moved or uncovered from weeds, and there's an old gas pump there and some other signage, a couple of old vehicles. It almost looks like uh, he's starting his own little rustic village there, and it's really charming. And um, then I remembered a spot just down the road, less than a half a mile away, where another person has uh, some signage and some interesting kitsch outside his place. And so I went ahead and snagged the Google Maps uh, Street View um, and posted that in here. Uh, I would have driven back out that way and made another picture or two, but my car is in the shop right now. But um, anyway, I thought that was really cool. And, yeah, I don't know if they do this in other parts of the country or not, but um, it, it's pretty it's common in the south when you get into the rural areas away from the cities to see things like this. And I think it's wonderful that there's preserving – some of the history and, and things. It's really awesome. It is, actually. Hobo tanks uh, have this I've, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, in Tennessee, it's rampant. And they've got, like, I think, I'm not sure if they do it over in East Tennessee, but a lot of the Cracker Bells are on here. They've got old signs and farm equipment and stuff and several of the mom and pop fans. And, but when, when you go up north, you don't see much of that unless it's John Deere. <laughs> everything's John Deere up there yeah but even then I wouldn't call it preserving because I see cars that are growing into the ground it seems too <laughs> turned into tree houses <laughs> <laughs> alright thank you kitty girl the ninja you are up okay this is my last one I might do another one if nobody else has one. But um, Carrie asked me a couple months ago to write a story for her horror thing, and I've been kind of putting it off. I mean, I already knew what I was going to write, but I hadn't written it yet. I even told her the title and everything. <laughs> and I was like, I'll get there, I promise. You just you just have to give me time. And especially with the last few weeks, all the drama and crap that's been going on, you know, with the blockchain freezing and, and all the witnesses having to update their stuff and making sure it was all in order. I finally had a time where I could sit down and breathe a little bit and pull it out of my brain and put it on some digital paper. So if anybody hasn't read that, uh, yeah, people have seemed to like it. Yes, you can see in the comments there. It, it'll be fun. We, have, we haven't done the recording yet, but you can, you can be looking for that on, on Carrie's House of Horrors soon. So when is the recording scheduled for? I don't know, Carrie. When is the recording scheduled for? She's typing away there. She 
she's working on it. Not scheduled. I'll get it ready to get voices soon. There we go. So yeah, we'll, to we'll be need at least three. Yeah, one that does the narrate the narration, and then one that does the two main characters there. It'll be Engine, good. Engine I'm may be able to, to announce it on Words with uh, with Witty. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Play a little sneak clip or something. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe do a partial live reading. Thank you, Engine. And Snook, you're up. Well, I know I did this this morning, but I'm really proud of how this turned out. I think you should be. So I just, for those who haven't seen it, um, it's a story I wrote. And then I have um, this new face recognition thing of a bobber. And I read the story. And it really turned out cute. So I, I wrote it, read it, and then, well, kind of performed it. Now it's kind of a children's video. It is a children's video. Fantastic. Did yeah. your kids get to watch it, Enchin? Yes. Did they like it? One second. It made them cry. Don't say that. <laughs> I think Engine's dealing with one of them before he could answer. I, I, I think he is, too. Azaria Thank says you. it's wonderful, Snook. I think you may have a, um, a niche there. Yeah. I Well, you know how I feel about children's stories. Yep. And uh, I it just, when I, I wish they had a, I like the bunny. It has the best, one of the best mouth movements in it, in the program. But I wish it was more girly. I'm well, sorry, somebody just got on and got a boo boo here. Yes, they they loved it. In fact, we're watching it again tonight because they were asking, "Can we see the bunny show? Can oh, we see the bunny show?" Oh, <laughs> you just made my night. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Here we the go. Bunny show. Here children's books by Snooky Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, sh you should definitely do a few more of those in the future. Okay, well, we real well. Unicornia, you are just in time, especially if you have a post ready. Do you have the I, link? I have no idea how big my smile is right now. I can feel it, trust me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I know that feels wonderful to know that you have fans already. That is so awesome. Well, and that little kids that you're writing it for like it. Yes, the target market liking it is always good. Yeah. So while Unicornia is searching for a link, this area's got, oh, maybe she has it there. Yes, go ahead, Unicornia. Be good, Wes. Vote for Wes. He, he, he runs his witness from his own blood. Just saying. Quite literally. Okay, Unicornia, tell us what you've got here. Where is she? Come on, Unicornia. Come on on voice. Oh, okay. She's going to do text. This is a little resume from a character perspective of a play of the band Frankenstein. Now, Unicornia, you know that you've got to have the text ready in advance, so I can't just keep waiting for you to type it. That's better. Get on voice. And there's, and there's we like to hear Unicornia's voice anyway, so. Well, exactly. And she's back to typing. 
Always off guard, always unprepared. Yeah, you gotta have a good secretary. If you're gonna arrive at the last minute, you have to have a good secretary. He's got everything ready to go. I did that for years as, as, uh, first few years I was Legion president. I was working in Toronto and I would show up for meetings at 25 after 7 that started at 7.30. But my secretary had everything sitting there waiting. I saw a snippet of something about Frankenstein V8 oh. in one of Unicornia's previous posts, and I'm anxious to hear about it. Yeah, she just needs to play. Really? There we go. Yep, we can hear you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm always late. I'm, I'm always unprepared for this. <laughs> so, so, tell us about this post. Oh, okay. Um, I had a big, big performance uh, with the band I'm on. I danced with a rockabilly band called Frankenstein B8. So, uh, I perform a robot made by the vocalist slash uh, guitar player. Uh, and the topic or the theme of this uh, edition of the Rockabilly Party here in Caracas were uh, retrofuturism, which means that we had to play those silly, funny, uh, yet cheesy characters from the 50s sci-fi movies. So, um, as you can see on the aesthetic of the blog <laughs> or the post itself, I tried to recreate um, the charm of. <laughs> I tried to recreate the charm uh, of that days of uh, to make a recap of what the party was in my perspective. Obviously, <laughs> I, I can talk in the name of all of uh, of the band, but I can play my character and tell you how the party was from the robot perspective. So this post, I, I really worked hard in this. I were like three days doing the markdown, working on the pictures, looking for the pictures and stuff because we had a personal photographer with us since we had we were too busy to, <laughs> oh, that's a cute robot, I love that emoji. Um, we were too busy to take care of taking pictures and stuff. I always take pictures of things for you and steam it. But I were too busy doing my makeup, uh, being with the guys of the band, saying hi to people, dancing, getting a little bit crazy before the show. And then in the show, um, dancing even more <laughs> because that's my duty there. <laughs> so um, pretty much, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much about that. That's the vocalist. Yeah, that's one of the of the singers, okay? I perform the robot. I am the dancer, one of uh, the main dancer of the band. But yeah, that's pretty much the aesthetic. Um, yeah, that's right. Fallout. Fallout is a great retrofuturistic theme <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the Love corner. It. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Unicornia. Thank you. I'm just in time. Thank you for letting me in. As usual, your guys are awesome. <laughs> and Assyria has a post for us tonight. Hi. Hi. I was just looking at Unicornia's post. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, that can be... Oh, cool. Um, yeah, those are crazy costumes. Very cool. Um, Sounds of Steam. If you're a musician or you know a musician, check it out. Live performance this Saturday night. MSP Waves. Are you performing? I'm hoping to get enough people so I don't have to. <laughs> but we love you. So you're gonna moderate, are <laughs> you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I host it with Agrod and Crystal and Shane, and uh, yeah. If I don't get enough people, then I'm going going to have to. And so, please perform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And, you know, and, and anyone, you could do anything. You don't even have to play music, just perform something. I could play the spoons. Yeah, there you go. I'm kidding. Spoon man. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh my God. W Woody, I just watched that the other day because I was looking through your page. I love that. Okay, come on there and spoon man. <laughs> we'll see. Saturday night is pretty busy for me with family around here. I'm not, I'm not sure I'll be there, but I will try. Yeah, we usually do. We've been alternating, but I think I'm going to stop doing this. Agard wanted to try to do this the Saturday night thing to give other people a chance, but we never, you know, it's like the worst night. So I think we're just going to go back to just keep doing it during the day on Saturday. It works better. So you'll let them have this round and then you'll go back to what you want. Yeah. Sounds Let's like do so quiet and then we can anyway. From Friday night to Sunday. It's like the quietest three days. Right. Yeah, it can be sometimes. Especially right um, now with well, the overall traffic on the platform being down. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Hey, Carrie Allen, what does that mean? It's not necessarily good. I'm sure it's good. You should come on and perform. Yeah, didn't you and Chris, you did music before, songs yeah, and Chris stuff? Sang, he's got, he's got a big music. You should get him on there, okay? Yeah. I think you've been booked, Carrie Allen. Yeah. Sorry, you're on the show. It's It's been just oh, like... Show up or be square. I was just going to say, be there, be square. Carrie Allen says, have you been to D, D Live lately? I totally play and sing. Well, and there you go. Come Chris, on down to Sounds of Steam. Chris says we do music stuff sometimes. Well, guess what? Chris and Carrie, yes. you have a gig on Saturday evening now. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't yeah. pay much, but they, you'll be there. No, they do share the rewards, though, with, with all the people yeah. that come and sing. So. Yeah, we're we not do. making big promises. Right, we do give out SBD. Yeah. Um, we you know, me and Oscar Bank and Crystal and Shane, we gather up SVD over the months and we give it out. So it is a, a paying gig. Last time we were able to give out 25 SVD to each person. Well, there you go. That's not anything to sneeze at. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we, you know, with the SVD and Steam being down this last month, I'm not sure if we can pull that off. But that was pretty cool last month. It would be. Chris says, uh, Chronicles of Steam Town, a Western musical comedy coming coming soon. Awesome. Carrie says, Chris works this week, so it'd be just me, and he's the best. <laughs> no, you're the best. Yes, take your proper spot there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Azaria. Amelia. Amelia. You're up. Hey guys, I feel like we haven't talked in forever. Oh, at least a few hours. I know, where you been? Oh, like what, two, three months? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ouch, I, but I deserve that. <laughs> so, I'm pimping this book, I just published it, and I'm actually pimping it more for, more for like a question to you guys as a group of people. But one thing I did want to announce is that I got a new kind of spammy tag uh, on this post, one that I haven't seen yet. So if you share photos, check out that spammy comment that I flagged at the bottom because, like, it looks like somebody's alerting you that your post was copied or something like that. That's not why I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up because when I was first building my Steam account, I posted a lot of posts like this, which are these photo contest entries, and they don't have a whole lot of written content in them. They're just like a piece of artwork entered into a contest. And while it helped me grow my account, I'm not really sure if people actually like them or like care about these kind of posts or think they're like total shit. So I would love if anybody who has any opinion on this matter of just like publishing like really low content posts for photo contest entries, like how do you feel about that? You really want me to answer that question? Sure, go ahead. 
One sec, let me sit up. Let's just sit up. He's getting serious here now. That's <laughs> <laughs> like charts and graphs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Um, it depends on how you measure them. Now, I don't know much about photography myself. I look at a picture, I either like it or I don't like it, and that's as far as photography goes for me. I can pick up a camera, look through the lens, or look at the viewer and go click, and that's about it. For um, quality, on the post itself, specifically comes down to... Um, the quality of the picture itself and I'm not um, in a position to measure that but as an alternative to it just being a picture I think in these competitions that all these pictures that are entered into a competition and um, give license to a um, steamy common um, group Whereas those pictures are then put on the blockchain, but other members of Steam can use them in their posts and pay either a su subscription fee or something like 0 0.001 Steam bit dollars and they get to use the um, picture. I think when you add something like that into it, that, that you add a bit more to what it is. But generally, where I see a picture, Nikon number zoom xxx and stuff like that it means nothing to me it means nothing to a lot of people and a lot of us fail to see the um, benefit of putting that picture there other than specifically to gain rewards I tend to like the approach that uh, Bluefin takes on his photos he'll put a, a single photo up and he'll write a little bit about it, and then he'll give some details about the photo itself. Yeah, what I'm curating, um, unless I know a photographer, if I don't know someone, um, and the same thing with art, if I, if there's no process there, like I'm not really sure what's going on, and that that's not something that I, I realized when I first joined the platform, like I would just post a song. But, it's, you know, now it's like when I post a song, like I write about it. People like words and they want to hear about um, the process of your art. Um, you know, I like I like on first of all, that picture is awesome. On did your you, post did there. You, did you take that picture, Thank Amelia? You. Amelia? Oh, yeah, I took that Amelia? picture. Of yeah, course, yes, I took that picture. Yeah, yeah that is really, years, really yeah, I'd like cool. to hear how you how you did it and what it what it is and how long it took and right I yeah, mean it doesn't have, have to be you know 18 paragraphs screen. but <laughs> I, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about it yeah yeah that's what I think people like that more on Steam it I mean you know you did put what you used using Nikon you used what, what what lens you used and everything like when I see that I'm more likely to curate it so you have that information there that's good um, but like Snook was saying, you know, just like the process, it's like, you know, whatever, like, you know, so I decided to, you know, do this because of X, Y, Z. And here was the process that I took to set it up and just stuff like that. Yeah, it does yeah. make it far more interesting. Uh, Hold the yeah. makes a comment that it. he finds most people don't care uh, about my written content if my first image is not attention grabbing. And that is true. Uh, anybody that is on the platform that does not use a graphic of any description in their post, they get they have a very hard time trying to get any traction. Yeah. But conversely, if you're using a photo only, there's also difficulty getting traction. So you have to find the balance. Yeah, it's hard to get a personal connection with your followers if you're not actually saying anything to them. Exactly. A, 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 a true photographer, you know, just seeing the photograph and, and what was used would probably appreciate it more than someone like myself who is more of a, a writer versus a photographer. Yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah. Hit the, you hit the nail on the head with that, the making the personal connection. And that was something I didn't realize when I first joined. I was so shy, and I, I was like, why would anyone care what I have to say? 
you know, I'm just want to post a song, but like people, you know, now as a curator, I understand it. You know, when I go to someone's, well, I curate music and if I go and someone just puts up a, a link to their song, I'm like, oh, you didn't even say anything about it. <laughs> you know, I think that we are <laughs> as humans, like we're drawn to that kind of personal connection and words. Um, Gives a little provide that. Yeah. Yeah. A picture's worth a thousand words. And if you can write those thousand words that were in your brain when you saw the picture, it just makes it that much easier for people to relate to you. So you have Wings just commented there that uh, she's seen a big difference in the response to her photography when she shares written con content. A big difference. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Also, the first few words in your post show next to the thumbnail. Um, in the feed, plus if you share it on Discord, the first few words show up as well. So those need to be as attention grabbing as your photo if if you want to really snag people in. True. Yeah, <laughs> I've had to work. I've had to work on that because I used to say hi everyone. Well, that then people don't care if you say hi or not. They want to know what the post is about and like. Like Kitty Girl said, you know, you got like five words. Yeah, if you have a a, a post that says something about, well, when my bathing suit came off today, right? You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, read it, you know. Well, that's so. <laughs> so, like, maybe the first sentence should just have the word boobs in it. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. So when you see all my next posts. Excuse me, did read about my boobs in this post. I'm going to blame it on you guys. <laughs> no, I just don't want to set it. <laughs> so, well, thank you guys. I really, everybody's I first words are going to be boobs. My thing is right. Yeah, I'm going to go into that post right away. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then we'll put at, at the end. Snook made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! You see these boobs? <laughs> I, I have now. <laughs> Girl, that's hilarious. Okay, I guess to follow up, would it edit the post and add a story? Because there's actually a pretty interesting story behind the photo and like my connection to the person who arranged the plant arrangement. And so, like, should I edit this post, or do you think I should publish the story in another post with other photos? Well, this one's already been out there for a little bit, right? About like seven right. minutes. Yeah. I treat this one as an experiment and then put the story into another post. Sure. And you know what? When, as an artist, you can take one piece of art and make multiple posts out of it, and that's okay. You yeah. know, if you... um. Because a lot of times on your art, whatever art it is, you're spending so much time on it, and then you put it out there, right? And then you're like, oh, what the hell? That's it? You know? <laughs> and so, like, you know, you could break it up into different sections, talk about the – one post talks about the process. There are a couple other pictures. Another post talks about why you did it. You know, just kind of, like, take your time with it and make multiple posts out of it. Chapters. The chapters of my artwork. Yeah. I love you guys. You're wonderful. Thank you for the good advice. Oh, Thank cool. Thank you, Amelia. And Kitty Girl, you're up. Well, every single week, in an almost tireless fashion, Shadows Pub comes in here and hosts a wonderful show where we can share our posts, but she hardly ever shares one of hers. So I'm going to put one of her posts up, and this is a post where you can uh, go in and rate her and let her know what, what a great job she's doing. Um, there uh, are other posts that she job. has. That, Whichever works. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I seriously doubt you'll get any single stars but anyway yeah this is a great way to let her know how much we appreciate her so thank you thank you shadows for doing this and pimp your post thursday has been going since october the 12th she does this every week 
without a break, even on holidays, she's in here. It, it's really admirable, you know, and I don't know how you do it. Two shows a day, and you never take a bathroom break. It, it's it's phenomenal. How do you know? That we know of. <laughs> yeah, you may have your computer set up in the potty. <laughs> So that would so, make today the eighth month's anniversary. Today's the twelfth. Nice. Wow. Oh, that's right. Today is the twelfth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Damien says Bluetooth headphones enable all, and Chris says depends are awesome. Uh, that could depend. Uh, what show number? Uh, I don't really know. However many Thursday th- Thursdays there's been, times two. I think um, it's Blue, 1961. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sea Blue and Kitty Girl, and I think Sea Blue and Mo Lovely uh, co hosted two shows for me. I had to be away for something. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, sea Blue and Mo, Mo Lovely came in one week. But yeah. other than that, yeah, you've been here every week. It's, it's phenomenal. That's well, dedication. Yeah, that was the week that I got that um, a Civic Award. If something comes up in the future, do I get to host it? You never know. <laughs> and no, you cannot discuss Banfield. No. <laughs> what, what about boobs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave them out too. That's a whole show right there. <laughs> it's a, a curation show about boobs. Is that what your new show's about? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> every Friday. Every Friday. I would also I like to call everyone's attention to boobs with witty instead of boobs with witty. I'd also like to call everyone's attention to the fact that this post is five days old. So if you're going to give her an upvote, you need to do it now. Although I know she would appreciate a comment at any time thereafter. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty Girl. And Snooks, yes. you have something. Um, you know what? Before, I, I was just looking at Amelia's post um, to upload it, and that fishing link. Um, Amelia, if you're still here, I'm just wondering if you clicked on it because someone left a comment saying if you click on it, that it could hack your site. So I'm talking from Tang's Discord because I just turned mine off, but um. So I accidentally did click the link, but then immediately realized my error and closed it before my super shitty satellite internet could really get me anywhere. So I'm hoping that that was not, that was okay. That was not the case. Do you guys think I could still get, I don't know, hit? I think if you closed it out immediately, you're probably okay. And uh, Ingenuity and I both downvoted that uh, comment heavily, so it would hide it. And hopefully uh, nobody else will really see it and be able to click. Yeah, yeah as long as you didn't, you know, put your any of your keys anywhere. Probably beyond, a good idea is Damien's commented to change the passwords yeah. anyways. No yeah. keys. And since the person that posted it has a 55 rep, I'm wondering if his account was hacked. It may not actually be him, but a hacker behind it. Mm. That's a good. That, that's possible. Yeah, it's getting dangerous to, to click stuff most of the time. Yeah, that's the same thing happened to Hanging about three months ago. I don't know if y'all remember that or not. Yep. Okay, Snook. Somebody hacked his account and was going fishing lines out there. Oh, Snook. There she is. I'm here. So, uh, last week I was talking about um, uh, evening art. Taught me how to shade in doodling, in sketching, in pencil. And um, this is some of the fun that I've been having, um, learning to draw. So I just wanted to share it because um, it's actually really relaxing. And I did these during um, the creative coffee hour while I was listening and talking to it. So it's something, you know, you can listen to the radio show or whatever and and take along with you and do. And I I know, like, coloring books and all that are, like, in style for relaxing, but this, you just need a 
pencil and um, and a pencil. A pencil and a pencil. That well, and some paper. Well, and some paper. Yeah. So, um, I've I've been having a lot of fun with it, as it's some of my friends know, because I send them pictures that they go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Smoke. But just just it's something that I think all of us did as kids. But um, if you go to Evening Hearts. Um, evening Arts uh, profile, she has this shading little exercise, and it's really cool. It's with little circles, which I've never done before, and that was the trick for me to make my little drawings and and actually make them look like something. So, I just wanted to share it. Looks pretty cool. Thank you, Snook. You're welcome. So, since Artemis isn't here tonight, I'm going to comment on the fact that it's her birthday on Monday. So, kind of thought that we might hijack part of her show, which is on on Monday. So, it starts at 1 o'clock, so that we can kind of wish her a happy birthday. Yeah. 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 So that starts at 1 Eastern Daylight Time. We'll have a birthday party. Yeah. And since, you know, she went off swimming tonight, then, you know, we don't even have to DM people. We can just publicly announce it. Right. So if there's anything that you really like that she posted, maybe, like, bookmark it and have it ready so we can really embarrass her. And tell her how wonderful she is. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that would be kind of cool. All right yeah. then. Has anybody else got anything else they'd like to uh, share? I do, but it's not student related. Okay. So, uh, if y'all have been here, for your kind of mom laugh a little bit. Her favorite song to make is a cat song. She goes meow, meow, meow. And she just learned how to blow bubbles. And it's the cutest freaking thing ever. And I tried to get the camera to take a picture. And I fumbled it, dropped it. And now she's laughing at me and pointing at the screen. So, it, But it was awesome. She's got you. Figured it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So you've been listening to Shadows Pub host, Pimp Your Post Thursday, evening edition from the Steam at Ramble. Broadcast live on Rambling Radio on DLive. And until next time, it's all about community. And goodbye, Wilma. Bye, Wilma.